Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Philip K. Dick's Electric Dream Season 1, Episode 3, it's called The Commuter. Full spoilers for the episode as always. So, what is The Commuter? Obviously this is a, an anthology sci-fi show, if, you've, if this is the first one you're jumping on for whatever reason. So each episode has its own story, this one is about a, a train, or train station employees, he, he works the the desk, he does the whistles, that kind of thing, and he starts to see a mysterious commuter who asks for a ticket to a place that doesn't exist. She's like, I want a ticket to, was it Mekon Heights was the name Macon. of the place? Mekon Heights. Uh, and it doesn't exist, and she describes where the, the, the train goes, where she gets the train all the time, it's this time, like, oh that's that train, but there's no stop called that. Uh, so it's a bit mysterious. He's got personal stuff going on in his life as well. His son is mentally ill and he's becoming increasingly more sort of psychotic and uh, dangerous as he goes on. He's like having outbursts, that kind of thing. Of course, the two stories do kind of have something to do with each other, but that that was the the gist of what it's about. So, uh, did you enjoy The Commuter? I did a lot. I thought it was uh, very good. I liked it quite a bit as well. If I, I probably think it's the best of the three episodes so far. Mm, I think it might be. I, I think, and I, I wasn't expecting that right away because it, when it when it started and it's just oh we're at a train station and you know what looks like present day. It seems the most mundane. Doesn't yeah, it? Uh, until of course things start getting weird. Well, once we have the mysterious passenger who wants to go to a place that doesn't exist, it's like okay, right? I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. And, and, and then she Batman's out of the scene, and it's like okay. And this is what I like though. She Batman's out of the scene, and obviously your first thought is. Uh, she wasn't really there, he's just seeing her. But the yeah. very next time you see her, someone else sees her and talks to her. Yeah, and it's like, okay, that was clearly telling us, no, she is real. That was the purpose of having someone else there. Yeah. Or at least she's not a figment of his imagination. Like, I mean, I, arguably she's not a real person per se, but at least she's showing up for other people. She's not just in yeah. his head. It's not just a delusion. Uh, which he, he himself even thinks at certain points, because he... He becomes more and more, of course, curious, and he, she shows him what train it is, and he, he knows what train he's going on, and he actually, eventually, like, he almost goes on once, and then he gets back off at the last second, and he's like, oh no, I'll just blow my whistle, right, train's ready to go, but eventually he does, he, he gets on the train, and he times it, he knows, because she says it takes tw- like 29 minutes to get to the station, so he's like, okay, 29 minutes, and he, he sets his watch, and he, he just waits, and then th- when they get to the, that sort of time, that sort of place, the doors just like open and people start stepping off the train even though it's still moving and there's no station. They're just jumping onto a field out yeah. in the middle of nowhere. And he's just like, what the hell are you doing? But Understandably so. Yeah, but he's curious enough that he takes the leap and jumps off and he follows them all. It's this group of you know, a few dozen people all wandering yeah. across this field to a location. And then he gets to this town, making heights. And it's this idealistic town uh, that seems very pleasant. Everyone seems very happy. He, he he bumps into like a couple who are happy. They're just getting engaged. He sees kids that are happy, you know, with their parents. He walks into this little diner and is offered like uh, a piece of pie for free with with his cup of tea. Uh, and everyone's very pleasant to him. And then he spends the day, you know, just you know watching kids in the park play. Uh, which is when Linda, uh, the, the mysterious passenger, shows up to him and kind of starts discussing things and he's like am mm. i going crazy is it is this is, is this is it am i having a psychotic break is this is what's happening and she's like yeah that's, that's very cynical to go to the negative immediately you, you don't believe that this mm-hmm. is real you're just jumping to you're crazy yeah come on but it's amusing because that's about what we were all leaping to as well as you're watching this you're going is he just crazy yeah, if, uh, but I, I think the fact that the, the co-worker sees her as well at one point it gives you the first seed of like, no, wait, there's something else going on here. It's not just right. that he's... That, that's the thing that, that stops it being just in his head because it's like, no. Whether, again, like I said, whether this is real or not is something else, but it definitely has some sort of tangible impact on the world that people can see. Now, I want to stop and talk about what I thought the episode was about at this point before he goes back because my, my opinion started to change quite rapidly when he came back and things yeah. had changed. But up until this point in the episode, we see throughout the episode, of course, that his son is becoming more unstable and him and his wife are having trouble dealing with it. They go to the psychiatrist and they're like, sort of saying, look, he's getting more dangerous. We have to talk about how to deal with this, what the, the mm. po- possible options are, and that, like, that kind of thing. Um, and you can see that he's always putting on this fake smile. He's always trying to pretend things are okay and, oh, things will be fine and, you know, he's okay and... Uh, well, there's this very poignant scene with his wife where she says, I'm not scared of him, but I'm kind of scared of you when you 
kind of pretend it's okay. Like that fake smile yeah. on your face worries me way more. And and the, the actual episode opens with him. He's making some tea, and he runs out of tea bags at work, and he fishes one out of the you know out of the bin out of the trash, and he like just washes it a little bit and puts it in, and he can tell he's he's given that to the coworker, the one who doesn't yeah, see what's going yeah. on. Uh, that's 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 Brendan in a nutshell, desperate for a cup of tea. Yeah, but he like I think what that seems telling you is like he's willing to kind of like sugarcoat things. Oh, it's fine. Like we solved it. Because he doesn't know that it's actually, you know, came from elsewhere. Bin, he, bin tea. Yeah, he, he, as far as he's concerned, this is fine. Uh, and it's kind of showing that instead of actually fixing the problem, which is just going and getting more tea bags, he covers it up. And I, I thought a lot of this was going to be about that. No, I, I think certainly that, that theme does play into the episode. Yeah. But when he first came to this town, and it felt like it was an escape. Like, everyone who comes here comes here to get away from something, to get away from something really bad in their life. Yeah. Uh, but it it turns out to be more than that because when he comes back after this visit, because uh, he talks to Linda about his son because the the kid with the kite reminds him mm. of his of his son. He comes home and the episode d- does a lot with repetition. Like uh, uh, you always see him take this, the same route home. You see him walking home multiple times uh, on different yeah. days, and he comes home again like he had before. But when he comes home, uh, his his son doesn't exist. He never existed. Uh, the the wife is kind of upset that they they tried to have kids but it never happened. Yeah. And, and and he obviously doesn't remember at this point either. Yeah, uh, I actually wasn't t- entirely sure on that point. Actually, at first, I, I was a little. If mm. I'm going to complain about anything, is that I wasn't entirely sure at first if he remembered things or not. Uh, okay, fair enough. I think I, I think for maybe a minute or so, it's a little unclear. Yeah, because but... he because he ends up going back back out to the place, and one of the things that we know has changed. It's not just him; is that his coworker never had kids before, and now all of a sudden he has three kids. He brings this yeah. up in a scene, uh, so so it just shows that things are changing, and all everyone else he meets keeps saying, "Oh, it gets addictive." Like you keep going, he, he goes to research it. He finds this woman who was writing an article for a newspaper. Is like, "Hey, what's this place?" And it turns out it was a place that was almost built. It was almost a town. So some guy dreamt of this place, got the approval. But there was some sort of financial errors. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a whole big thing. She says, you know, it's not a conspiracy. It was just incompetence, and that that was a, another another message throughout. It's like, yeah, it's not the world's out to get you. It's not that there's mm-hmm. a big master plan. It's that sometimes things just go wrong. So, you know, like it's not orchestrated that way. So he goes back again. But then we have this, this, there's this great sequence where he he starts to kind of remember things and he, he gets up in the middle of the night and he, he finds home movies mm. of of his son and, and he's watching it. And it's this very emotional scene. I, 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 I want to point out as well here, actually, that this episode, the score is actually, the main theme of the title sequence comes from this episode because yeah. it plays throughout uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, very uh, hypnotic, very kind of yeah, haunting. Yeah, I love the score in this episode. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was the best score of the three episodes as well so far, which is probably a big part of why I liked it so much. I also, I think it was tighter as well. I felt like it by the end of the episode, I had a, a good solid idea of what the, the point of the episode was, what the message was, what I was exploring. Uh, you know. Yeah, it was a little less ambiguous than the last one as well. Yeah. But at the same time, there was enough ambiguity that it didn't just feel like it was spelled out or anything like that. Right, but last episode it was like, okay, there was a few things this really could be. Whereas here it's like, no, I know what this is. It's just, you know, fine-tuning on the details. Yeah, so... But once he remembers his son, he, he, he goes back. He goes back to, to making making heights. And things have changed. Like, people there are starting to, like... Look, like there's a guy who looks like he's been shot in the face. The, the kid who was happy before is crying. Uh... People are saying, oh, it's your fault. Like, you, you brought this place down. Why did you do this to us? And I'm like, wait, is this a place where... You know, at this point in the episode, I'm thinking, is this a place where, like, people who are getting ready to kill themselves, like, go? And then this is where they finally go when they do, when they do it? Mm. But he's, like, bringing in these negative vibes. Like, you know, I was just I was sort of racing, because at this point, it was still kind of unclear exactly yeah. what this place was, until he, he, he looks for Linda... And he, but he goes into the, the restaurant again and he meets the same waitress that he's met a few times who's given him various cakes and various hot drinks <laughs> yeah. throughout the episode. Uh, and she gets emotional and she tells him a story of like why she comes here. And it's uh, this story about how she was like assaulted and abused uh, when mm-hmm. she was a kid. And then we get more examples of it. When he, when he goes to see Linda, it becomes clear that this place is... 
some people yes yeah, it's an escape like some people can't deal with reality so they have to escape it and there's the guy from a uh, preacher <laughs> yeah. who we keep seeing in the train who when he's leaving again here towards the end he's like you know i'm, I'm glad you you're out of it but for some of us we need this place i did some yeah, really bad it's, things it's it's said uh, this is all they've got they can't cope with the, with the real world yeah, but there's this kind of touching thing in here because obviously for his character, for Ed, the main character, his whole thing is that he was clearly having doubts about his son. He was starting to feel the burden of having a son with these, these issues and not being able to cope with it uh, to the point where like we find out he was even dreaming that, um, you know, what if he never existed, which is why this kind of ended up happening when he came to this place. Mm. Uh, but once he's actually faced with that that possibility, you know, he's like, no, Linda, like, he's my son. I, I don't care like what's wrong yeah. with them he's still my son there was happy times it is, he, he a, has that great speech but you know like how yeah dreaming of it isn't the same as wishing it was real it was it's, yeah. it's just a thought a what if yeah and then even when she says and because she seems to have more knowledge she's you know she's like a god or whatever but she's like oh you, like things are going to get worse he's going to get more violent he's going to do mm. bad things you're going to do bad things as a result this is going to yeah. go bad and he's like well that's the way it's meant to be but it's real. It's not. It's not fabricated. And uh, there's kind of a sense of humanity here. It's kind of about accepting that this is what life is, no matter who you are. Like this is the this is the hand you were dealt. So you so you make it work. And I, I think it's it's really a story about how he was drifting from his family because of what he was going through, and he was having this fake smile on his face. But he begs for his son back. He goes through this realization, and when he comes back at the end of the episode, and again playing with repetition, we see him walk home the same way he has done before. He goes in the house. Yeah. And he says, hey, it's me home again, like he's been doing all episode. And he goes into the kitchen and he just sees his son standing there making some tea just to, you know, make it around episode. <laughs> like, you know, bookend it with tea. He turns around and says, oh, hey, dad. And then that's it. Cuts to credits. But that's all you need. It's like, okay, yeah. he, he got what he wanted. Yeah, he's back. For, for better or worse, he, yeah. he got his son back, which is what... which, And I, I think it's a very human story and it's a very kind of... You appreciate why the temptation is there, but it's about saying... No, we don't just abandon people or a life yeah, because and, they're difficult. And it's, and... it's also he he learned the lesson that you know going back to the tea at the start is he took the shortcut. He's like, yeah. no, I'm not going to go and get anything. I'm just going to use you know the worst thing here. I'm, I'm going to take the shortcut, the easy way. But and and obviously, getting rid of the sun was essentially the shortcut, the easy way to be happy. But yeah. he, he ultimately decided, no, you've got to put in the work to to for it to be real and, and get the actual happiness at the end. Yeah. Because the moments of happiness are worth it. And I think that's why this is my favourite episode, is because I think the human story at the centre of it is so clearly there, and it's so well defined. It has a beginning, middle and end. Because even from the start of the episode, when you see him making the tea, and he's like doing this sort of shady thing where he's using the dirty one, I'm like, okay, right away, this has just told me something about his character. I maybe didn't get exactly what it was yet until I got a little bit more information, and I got a bit more about what his life was like, and the fake smiles and all that kind of stuff. But I immediately got, this is communicating to me something about yeah. who he is. Uh, and it felt very tight in that sense. As opposed to the first episode where we felt like, oh, it felt like a lot of it was setting up things that would never get paid off. Yeah, whereas here, everything was servicing this this one character. Yeah. Um, and just, just the, the actual photography as he was getting, you know, everything to do with the people jumping off the train, them all walking towards the town, the shots going yeah. through the town, which again, were repetitious. There was even characters who repeated lines every time he went, like it was on a loop. Yeah, and he would always get bumped into by the engaged couple. Yeah. Do, do you know the, the shot I really loved is them getting picked up back onto the train? Mm, yeah, it was really pretty. Because well, it's just it's this long look down the line, down the tracks, and just watching the train come towards them and then kind of running towards the camera. Yeah. Uh, yeah nice. No, it's it's a really pretty episode. It's a uh, kind of a heartwarming episode. You know, but it's it's a really heartwarming episode where it's like it's accepting that not everything is like a happy sunny story, but even in the darker times there's a there's a yeah, it's, good it's, thing it's to take from. It's basically going it. yeah, life life's hard, but that's 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 life essentially, but there's good in that too. Yeah. Uh, of course, one of the things we find out about the guy who built this place, like Linda turns out to be his daughter, uh, mm. and whether this, this Linda we're seeing is actually his daughter, just sort of taking that appearance because it fits the, the thematic. thematic. Yeah, but well, because we find out that after this didn't happen, after the town got rejected because of financial reasons, he uh, he killed himself like weeks or months later. You know, it was pretty mm. soon after, and she found him, and it was the idea of what could have been. 
dreaming of what yeah. could have been there. This, this was her escape. Like, what, what if he'd never died? What if this was, yeah, what had come to be? Yeah. Somehow that was the start of all this. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny. I also, I like when he's bargaining with her, actually. He threatens to, like, oh, I'm going to tell people not to come here. It's bad. Uh, you need to use my trains. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but... He makes a good point, though. It's like, what's sustain? Because, you know, she says, oh, it's fine. You know, not enough of them. And he's like, yeah, but how many do I need to stop? until it's until it's enough and it's the idea that is it the the obviously because you know him discovering the truth in infected the town it had this physical effect on the mm. people there how much is it like is this town sustained by the people going there and having these these wishes uh seemingly a lot it makes me, it makes me wonder how it started but I, I think some of the mysteries there's good it's like yeah I, I, I think it loses some of its mystique if we actually get too too much of it explained. no yeah it's one of those yeah. where i want to know more like i want to think yeah. about it and I, I like i like i like it at all maybe it's this maybe it's that but i don't actually need them to tell me yeah if they actually told us exactly how it started and how it built from hard to more people it'd be like no that's just too much now it's just losing yeah, all yeah. this that's, that's boring but I, I like thinking about it especially know, maybe especially since it's like a mystical element like it's not real it's like supernatural like i, I don't yeah. want more of it to explain but like i have to imagine it's like her you know her pain was so strong that it kind of you know broke reality somehow yeah it manifested in, in some weird way yeah um and it, be- it became this thing but uh no, I, I thought, obviously, the acting from, uh, what's his face, Timothy Spall. Timothy Spall, yeah. Uh, he, he's, he, he's fantastic. He's, he's very good in this episode. And I, I like that he's such a normal guy. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's not a pretty Hollywood-looking actor or anything like that by any means. He's a typical middle-aged-looking guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, that's just who he is, and that's it works better for the story because he is just this normal person in pain. It makes it all feel really grounded, despite the fact that it's such a fantastical story. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the emotions definitely. are real, as we, as we kept seeing. It's also all about the human story. That's what it's about. Yeah, he delivers the performance that, that it needs. Exactly. Uh, and I think without that, it would probably fall apart. That's it. All the supporting cast are pretty good. You know, the wife's good. Uh, Linda's good. Like, you know, everyone's... Yeah, yeah like, ev- everyone's good, but th- this episode does fall on his shoulders because, yeah. you know, it's all about him. If, if his performance isn't there to back up the emotion, then it, it would fall flat. Mm. Yeah, next episode's got Steve Buscemi in it, so we'll see if... Uh, Looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, curious to see how he uh, shapes up. Um, but no, so so that's been uh, uh, The Commuter. Which, by the way, there's a movie coming out soon with uh, Liam Neeson called that. It's an yeah, action movie. I like Liam Neeson. Yeah, it's an action movie about a commuter, which, as silly as that sounds, I actually think it's a great title for an action movie. The Commuter. It's, de- it's a great title for a Liam Neeson action movie as well. Because it, it, it's the kind of thing where it's like, uh, like these crooks thought they'd get away with it, but there was one man on the train who just couldn't let it happen. Like you know, it just it has that yeah, vibe yeah. to it. It does. It does. Uh, it's like who is this? Who's stopping? It's kind of like if you go back and watch the Under Siege movies, and it's like it's just a cook. Because yeah, I mean, they, they didn't, but they could have called those movies the cook or the chef. Maybe they should have done. They probably should have done. Under Siege is a pretty good title. They're, you know, they were April that's, and that's not bad, thing. yeah. But, yeah, they, they could have called it that, and that's kind of the thing. Like, it's just a chef. But then, of course, you find out, no, but he's an ex-Navy SEAL, Black Ops, something or other, who can do all these things. Yeah. And then so, with this one, it's, it just boils down to, yeah, but it's Liam Neeson, so... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I feel like every couple of years, there's, like, there's a report of him quitting action movies. There was one just this past week. And yeah, then, like, and then, two... like, a week later, he was like, I'm not quitting action movies. No, are you kidding me? I'll be doing this till I'm 80. That's fine. <laughs> Respect to the guy, you know, lot of, lot of effort. I, I think it's paying for some new houses, is what I think. I think he gets yeah, a good paycheck for these action movies. He's he definitely does. It definitely supports him doing you know whatever little indie thing he wants to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that, that's us viewed really off off track to use a appropriate. I mean, we we, we were still with the title. We're, okay, we're talking about trains. Sure, yeah. It's close enough. Yeah, uh, no, I, I like this one a lot actually. Uh, I, I I think the atmos- atmosphere was consistently there. The mystery built at a really nice pace, uh, and I think it was the. I think it was just even though I really liked how beautiful the ending of you know the Impossible Planet was. I think this one was much better clearly defined, and I like it was emotionally a great moment because it just it, you know that's it. It's the end of the story. He got his son back. He, he... yeah, yeah. He's he's going to go through those difficulties. He probably is. But he's going to appreciate the, but that's the, the, the point, happier though. moments more. He's, he's stronger. He's a stronger person because he's made that choice. Yeah. 
So no, it was a, it was a great standalone story. Uh, I would highly recommend this episode. I, I mean, because obviously it's an anthology, you, you can recommend just episodes on their own. Like, you can do that. Yeah, like, like if you're going to watch episodes in the future and you're not going to watch through all of them, this one is definitely one that you should check out again. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. That is the commuter. Let us know what you think of it in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter, mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. You can do that over there, but otherwise that is us. Uh, so thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?